Hey, this is Dr. K from I Medical School here to talk about Parkinson's disease. If you'd like to support Parkinson's disease research, click the link in the description to see what you can do. Parkinson's disease is a neurological disorder that has affected some of my favorite actors, such as Robin Williams and Michael J. Fox. More importantly, Parkinson's disease affects about 5 million people worldwide with little understanding about what is Parkinson's disease. Around 5,000 years ago, there was a disease called Kampavada in the Indus civilization that consisted of shaking and poor muscle movement. This was believed to be the first description of what we know as Parkinson's disease. As medicine progressed, the physical and physiological interactions that led to Parkinson's disease became better understood. The development in our understanding began with Frederick Louis in 1912, who identified cytoplasmic inclusions in various regions in the brain. Before we can understand what Parkinson's disease is, we need to understand what are the basal ganglia and why are they important? The basal ganglia, or extrapyramidal system, include the substantia nigra, globus pallidus, subthalamic nucleus, and thalamus. There is an array of complex connections between these parts of the basal ganglia. Let's try to focus on a simple pathway that highlights what happens in Parkinson's disease. We know the cumulative a function of the basal ganglia is to control the motor and premotor cortical areas to allow for smooth performance of voluntary movements. In Parkinson's disease, the loss of dopamine producing neurons in the substantia nigra leads to the symptoms and signs associated with Parkinson's disease. There are two major pathways that are involved in the regulation of motor function. These pathways are called the indirect and direct pathways. These pathways can be complicated, but let's try to simplify them as best as we can. The cortex, responsible for decision-making and execution of tasks, projects neurons onto the striatum, which consists of the caudate and the putamen. These neurons are called the corticostriate pathway that create the excitatory effect by using glutamate. The striatum projects inhibitory neurons to the internal globus pallidus. The globus pallidus as a whole is comprised of an internal and external section. These neurons from the striatum use GABA to inhibit the neurons projecting from the internal globus pallidus to the thalamus. The thalamus has an excitatory effect on the motor cortex to promote movement through the corticospinal tracts. To understand this better, the cortex creates a positive signal that inhibits the inhibitor of the thalamus. The more active the striatum is, the less the globus pallidus can inhibit the thalamus. In the end, the direct pathway leads to more motor activity. On the other hand, the indirect pathway leads to less motor activity. The indirect pathway starts with inhibitory neurons that extend from the striatum to the external globus pallidus. Then, inhibitory neurons project from the external globus pallidus to the subthalamic nucleus. From the subthalamic nucleus, excitatory neurons act on the neurons in the internal globus pallidus. Remember, the neurons in the internal globus pallidus project an inhibitory effect on the thalamus. In the end, the indirect pathway enhances the internal globus pallidus activity, turning down the excitatory effect of the thalamus. The indirect pathway leads to a down-regulation of motor activity. The balance between the indirect and direct pathways allows for smooth movements. So how does this explain Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a loss of dopamine-producing neurons in the substantia nigra. The neurons project from the substantia nigra to the striatum. Dopamine increases the direct pathway and decreases the indirect pathway with a net effect of promoting movement. As a result, with the loss of this neurotransmitter, the net effect becomes hypokinesia or loss of movements. Now, we know what happens at a more microscopic level. How does Parkinson's disease present clinically and how is it diagnosed? 
Parkinson's disease is a clinical diagnosis. There are no blood tests available so far that allow us to diagnose Parkinson's disease by simple lab tests. There are signs and symptoms when observed in combination can help us identify Parkinson's disease. The most important of these features is bradykinesia or slow movement. Bradykinesia can be identified by observing a Parkinson's patient walk. Ask the patient to walk down a hall and turn. Not only will they walk slow, but they will turn very slowly and in place, a finding described as turning on a soap box, while the rest of us are more broad in our turning radiuses when walking. In addition, the presence of a tremor with cogwheel rigidity are important signs to identify. Cogwheel rigidity is when you try to move an extremity, such as a forearm, you will notice a lot of pressure needs to be applied, and the forearm will move in a jerking manner, like the turning of a cogwheel. Now that we know how to diagnose and the physiology behind Parkinson's disease, what is the treatment of Parkinson's disease? There is no cure for Parkinson's disease. The treatment of Parkinson's disease is to help increase the dopamine levels in the brain and thereby help manage the symptoms. The drugs available for Parkinson's management include dopamine agonists, MAO inhibitors, anticholinergic medications, amantadine, and COMT inhibitors. The most effective therapy for Parkinson's disease is dopamine agonist and levodopa. Levodopa is particularly useful when the symptoms of bradykinesia start affecting a patient's quality of life. Levodopa can be used with carbidopa to increase its efficacy. Levodopa can be metabolized by the body using a decarboxylase enzyme before it has a chance to act on the central nervous system. Carbidopa is a decarboxylase inhibitor that prevents carboxylase from digesting levodopa and thereby increasing the amount of levodopa that is able to act on the central nervous system. An example of a levodopa-carbidopa combination is Cinemet. Generally, dopamine agonists like bromocryptine or cavergoline are started in young patients early in Parkinson's disease, and then, as the disease progresses, patients are transitioned to levodopa. In addition, Parkinson's patients may be started on MAOI inhibitors, such as selegiline and resegiline, which help increase dopamine levels as well. MAOIs may be used as monotherapy in early disease when symptoms are not debilitating, but should not be used when symptoms are more significant. When symptoms worsen, MAOIs can be used in addition to other medications to help manage symptoms. Finally, amantadine is a weak anti-Parkinsonian drug that has few side effects. It can only manage mild symptoms and should only be used early on in the Parkinson's course. Well, that was a brief review of Parkinson's disease. If you like this video, make sure to give it a video a like. Make share this video with your friends and classmates. If you have any questions, please place them down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from my medical school, and I'll see you next time.